What's up, YouTube? Just kidding. Hey guys, I thought I'd make a quick little video on my experience building my PC. Um, just a quick disclaimer, I've never made one beforehand, so the entire process is new to me. Just want to show, especially if you're thinking of making your own PC and haven't done so before, that it is fairly straightforward, piecing everything together. A lot of my time was spent researching the parts, finding the best prices, and uh, making sure it was all compatible. Now, the most important aspect is what purpose the PC will serve. So, for myself, this will be a gaming PC, not so much towards AAA on ultra settings, more so for MOBAs and for playing my Steam library. Also, it will serve as my home computer, searching the web and doing some light video editing. Yeah, cool. After doing some research and watching a lot of the budget computer builds, I wrote down a list of parts that I found suitable for my requirements and also that fit my budget and then used good old Google to find the cheapest parts available to me. So I ended up spending around 700 Aussie dollars all up, AUD, a little bit inflated especially with the boosts and RAM costs at the moment. Now I'll give a quick rundown of what parts I went with and how much they set me back. So the Ryzen 3 2200 G APU for 139 Australian dollars, Asus Prime B350 Plus motherboard for 135, Corsair Vengeance LPX 2 times 4 gigabytes at 3000 megahertz for 160 dollars, Western Digital SSD 250 gigabytes that fits an M.2 slot for 119, Thermaltake Versa N27 mid tower in Snow White for 70 dollars and a Cooler Master MWE Series 80 plus 500 watt for $55. So let's go ahead to the building process. First thing I unboxed was the motherboard. Inside the box it is wrapped in an anti-static film. Initially I was extremely careful not to damage anything. I placed it on top of its own box, ready to have parts installed. Just a quick note guys, I referred a lot to the diagrams provided in the motherboard manual and highly suggest you do the same. I found it a great help while I was also watching YouTube how-to videos. First part I installed was the APU. Be careful of the pins as they can bend if misaligned. There's a gold arrow on the corner of the APU that lines up with one on the motherboard. This motherboard has a latch style pin which is lifted and pressed once the APU is seated. Next thing is the cooler. You can see me removing what is called the retention brackets. It holds a plate which is beneath the motherboard from this angle. Once it was removed, I could install my cooler. I had a bit of trouble initially with threading the screws. I suggest very slightly thread one corner and then thread the opposite corner's screw, then proceed to screw all four corners down. The cooler has a wire that connects to the motherboard. In this case, it is a 4-pin unit above the cooler and is labeled CPU fan. Once that's done, I went ahead and slotted my RAM. Putting it in feels a little bit stiff, but don't be afraid to apply decent pressure directly downwards. Most important thing is that the notch on the RAM aligns with the notch on the motherboard. Lastly, I fitted the SSD onto the M.2 slot there are holes along the motherboard next to the M.2 which are used to hold, in this case, my SSD. I sat the SSD and found the appropriate hole, then attached a mounting screw which came with the motherboard to that hole. I slotted the SSD onto the M.2. It will sit at an angle, simply hold it down and screw the end to the mounting bracket. Now that I've got all the components onto my motherboard, I move on to prepping the PC case. With the case, the first thing I did was attach the I.O. input slash output shield which was provided with the motherboard. It sits in the back and in my case took a bit of effort to clip in. Once fitted, I moved on to the power supply or PSU. Do note it helped to remove all the side paneling from the case and this provided me, me with better access. Before I move on ahead, the wires attached to the case for the power button, USB etc. I fed through the back and into the case via one of the openings, just to tidy up the cabling. Now, the PC unit has the box and all the wires necessary to provide power to the PC. In this case, it sits at the bottom, and there are four screw holes at the back to mount it. Keep all the cables tidy.
Next, I lay the case with the opening facing the ceiling, ready to install the motherboard. Carefully I align the I.O. shield with the inputs on the motherboard. The I.O. shield I used had metal prongs, so be mindful that these don't accidentally poke into the input sockets. This case I used had pre-installed mounting screws in the perfect place for my full-size ATX board, so it was simple straightforward bolt-on. If using a different size motherboard, you may need to adjust these mounting screws. Once the motherboard has been fitted, it's time to connect all the necessary wirings. Now there are wirings from the PSU which provide power and wirings from the PC case that are attached to the power button, USB slots, headphone jack, etc. Keep in mind guys, I found it very useful to refer back to the diagrams in the manual, especially for the cabling. I found the only PC wires I connected were the 24 pin and 8 pin to provide the motherboard with power. I didn't need to use the SATA connector because my SSD makes do with the M.2 slot. Take note if yours requires this connected. I also have no extra peripherals which needed connecting. So with that, PSU done. While going through this step, I realized I could feed the wiring however I like. So if you're at the stage, depending on your case, manage them cables however suits you. I assumed there was an ideal way and there probably is, but it's pretty fun to freestyle. So lastly, I connected up the leads from the case onto the motherboard. For this step, I simply followed the diagram in the case manual and motherboard manual. These are a bit fiddly. Note that some of the leads require connecting either plus or minus in the correct orientation. On the leads there's an arrow which indicated plus or positive, so that's quite helpful. And basically done! Connect the PC to the wall and switch on to test. From here I went through the BIOS and then an install of Windows 10 for my flash drive. And that's it! Hope this video is helpful. Leave a like and comment if it was, and feel free to subscribe. 2018 PC Build. Peace.